Astros clubs, the, the nursery workers, the teenagers. This place is normally just filled with life all around, the people that come into the auditorium here. We're able to share um, our burdens with each other and look to the Lord. And so we can still do that as Brother Mike prayed. If you have other prayer requests, uh, you could call the church, leave it on the church answering machine, and we'll get that. And we'll be sure and be praying for you, for your families, and uh, for all those in need. Do pray uh, for one another. And uh, we're thankful that, as far as I know, nobody has uh, the coronavirus in our church, our school family. And so we're thankful for that. We pray that God would just continue to build a hedge around about us. Thankful for our president, our governor, and uh, pray for them as they make decisions that affect us. And uh, I'll be honest with you, as I've, th this whole time has just moved forward, um, you know, I'm, I'm more serious about, you say, Pastor, how could you have been serious? I, I really didn't see it as a, a great threat to younger people. I thought, you know, the older people and those that have uh, existing, you know, health issues that it would be hard on them and that maybe they could pass. But I believe it's just something that for everybody, you need to be concerned, you just need to stay in, follow the instructions when you're at home, um, even in your house. I, I would, I would uh, uh, wash, uh, wash your hands regularly, get a towel or something to, you know, when you can't hit your face, it's really hard, you know. I'm at Walmart walking around there and people are just, you know, making all kinds of contusions, trying to itch their eye with the other eye and so on. It's, uh, it's kind of it's humorous, but, uh, you know, when you can't, uh, it, it always feels like, like right now I need the itch right here. I can't, you know. But see, I have a hanky here, and so I can take that and just rub that like that, and hopefully that's safe. But uh, we do want to be, be very, very careful, pray for one another. I will say that my family members, all four of them up in Seattle, that have uh, the virus are doing okay, and I think they're all going to make it. And all four of them had, uh, my brother-in-law Pat has multiple myeloma. My sister-in-law Radine has a serious um, infection already uh, that she's dealing with and uh, and I think she's going to be okay and then my brother-in-law Roger he's older not in the best of health but I'm just thank I thank God I think all of them are going to make it and so I rejoice thank you for your prayers for them and uh, and I know that God does answer prayer and I know he's going to see us through and I know that this didn't catch God by surprise. This, this whole scenario, um, as we'll see in our story tonight about Joseph, you know, long before uh, that the, the land had the famine, God was, was calling a young man, was teaching a young man, was taking a young man and uh, really selecting him to be the leader to be the one that would feed the whole region, would have the wisdom of God to store up for seven years food and have, have seven years of famine then and have food available. And, uh, and so um, our situations are not exactly like that, but I, I have to tell you, God's in control. God has prepared you for such a time as this. And if you're a believer and you've been saved a long time, you know and understand that God has watched over you. God has helped you. All of us have had situations in our lives, personal lives, um, that affected us. A loss of a loved one. Um, the words that we, hey, well, you have cancer. Um, difficulties as such. But... This one, as we've mentioned several times now, affects all of us. This trial is, is affecting the whole world. And so it's different. We're all going through this at the same time. We're all going to have testimonies to share about how God provided 
how God uh, prepared the way. And uh, do you know, um, God, has, God has a plan for you out and beyond this. This right here, this time for you, may be a time that God is going to use to launch you into something greater, something better, something that uh, He has for you to do. And uh, I think that we just have to keep our eyes on Him. As we look at this passage tonight, we're going to see a family. And, you know, we're all at home with our families. We're all dealing with our families, more so uh, probably than in a long time. You're, you're at home, the kids are home, you're dealing with their homework, you're dealing with just uh, them getting along with each other. Uh, husbands and wives are, are home together, and uh, usually you're out, and, and you're just all out of off schedule. And so, by the grace of God, and through the power of God, you may, you may uh, come out of this with a stronger marriage. You may come out of this with just an, another uh, idea or conviction about spending more time with your children and helping this. There are so many good things that can come out of this difficult time. And God loves you, and He's going to work it out. And he'll, He's going to work it out for His glory. And so let's do, uh, let's do pray for again for our, our leadership, pray for one another, and look to God, because God truly is going to see us through. We're planning now for next fall. I was talking today with some staff planning the administration for next year school because we're going to be back in school. I'm not sure about this year whether we're going to finish at home. Um, our staff's working diligently. I'm thankful for each one of them, each one of our teachers. Pray for them, by the way. This is a time that they're, they're preparing lessons for, to, t- to teach online for the students. And so it's different. It's different than teaching a lesson and standing in front of the students where you can see all of them. And so uh, they're, they're learning, they're learning their computers, they're learning how to use technology, and striving together, uh, we're looking to give the kids a good education for uh, the month of uh, the rest of this, well, we're into April now, this, today's uh, April 1st, and uh, so we finished March, now we're into April, and then we have May. I'm not sure about school, whether it's going to be uh, or whether we're going to finish in May or whether we're going to have to uh, just uh, do homeschooling the rest of the year. But um, I'm praying for those uh, that uh, in, in the Riverside County Education Department and also for our governor as he makes that decision. So I'm thankful. I'm blessed. I hope that you have everything that you need. If you don't, call the church, leave a message, and we'll try to get it. If I was you, I would get out and get some things. If you have a few things that you're short of, I would do that uh, uh, probably uh, as soon as possible and uh, get that, um, make, make sure that you um, are, you know, have all the things. I think they're going to be, they may be a little bit uh, tighter on the quarantine in the days to come. So uh, there, I think there's going to be another massive shopping spree, uh, kind of a panic thing maybe in the next few days. That's a possibility. So I would go and get what you need and just uh, be at home, spend some time with the Lord, watch the chapels that the guys are doing each day. Um, I'm going to be begin posting a, a message on our school uh, website or the, the school Facebook for our parents next week. And uh, I want to help them, help them through this time. Um, we have a a wonderful church family, and we have a wonderful school family, and uh, I'm just thankful that we can minister to them at this time, and so we want to be much in prayer for them. As we look at our passage um, this evening in Genesis chapter 37, as Brother Mike mentioned in that second step, you have, you have uh, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, whose name was turned to Israel, and then you have Joseph, okay? Now Joseph is just coming on the scene here. He's a young boy, and uh, he's, uh, he's just doing his job as a shepherd and uh, feeding the sheep. And, and again, it's interesting. They, 
They're living in Hebron, which is just, just outside of Bethlehem. So, so much happened in Bethlehem. Um, and uh, uh, as, we, as we deal with the shepherds, so many were shepherds that God used. And how exciting it was to be stand out there and look at the hillsides in Bethlehem and see where the sheep uh, were, were grazing. And uh, the Bible says in, in chapter 37 of the book of Genesis, in, uh, in verse 3, it says this, Now Israel loved Joseph, Joseph more than all his children, because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that, that, saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. It's interesting that, that uh, Jacob you know, is making the same mistake, really, that that he had to deal with. His brother was favored, and, uh, and he, he got the birthright, and there was a, a conflict, and so on. And now he's doing the same thing. He's really turning his brothers and sisters against, uh, or the brethren, against Joseph by favoring him and showing him favor, making him, giving him a coat of many colors. He loved him. Now he was he was the, you know, the, the son of his old age. He was the son uh, that was, he was blessed with. But let me say this. It's very important that you teach and treat all of your children equally. If you brag on one, brag on the other one. Don't, don't brag on one and then say, well, don't say anything about this. If they're not, nobody else is around, brag on them. But be very careful about showing favoritism when it comes to the children. They're not going to hate him, but it certainly hurts feelings. And so as parents, we have to be very, very careful uh, that we don't uh, create any type of hurt feelings and strife uh, between our children. We had five daughters. We raised five, raised five daughters, and I'm thankful for each one of them and their love for the Lord and the different gifts and abilities they had. But we, we tried our best to, t to treat all of them equally. And Joseph uh, was favored here. And because of that, his brethren didn't like him. They hated him. They could not speak peaceably. They couldn't even speak to him. And, uh, and so God is going to use Joseph. God has a plan for Joseph. The Bible says in 37 and verse 5, And Joseph dreamed a dream. And so he's dreaming this dream. The brethren already hate him. And he told, it, he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. So he tells them the dream. He said unto them, Here, I pray you, this is the dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves uh, in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and stood, uh, stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood round about and made obeisance to my sheaf. Now, boy, they didn't like that. What he was saying is he was going to be elevated, and one day they were all going to look to him. He's the youngest. Uh, really, he's the one chosen by Jacob to be the one that's going to... He's the youngest, but he's favored. He's going to get the inheritance. He's going to get everything. He's going to get all the authority. His dad had already, was already planning that. But now Joseph has this dream... And he tells them, listen, all of the sheep stood round about and made obeisance uh, to my sheep. It's an amazing story. And they don't like it. They're mad. In verse number 8, again, uh, And his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us, or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told it to his brethren. I mean, it's bad enough he had the first dream. Now he has another dream. And said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeisance to me. So now, now he's got all the children 
And Jacob says, and he, and he dreamed yet another dream, and it told his brethren, um, and behold, uh, I, I, I'm dreaming, and I'm having this dream about all of you, and um, all of you are going to obey. Not only, not only are the kids going to obey, but also the mother and father. Are we indeed going to bow down ourselves to thee? And, uh, and so... Again, this is the neat thing about this church, is that God, God is preparing, God is mapping out. Joseph didn't, didn't choose this. God chose Joseph. He chose him. He's going to use him. But you see, in, the whole, the, in this whole scenario, Joseph is, gonna, is going to take care of his mother and father. Joseph's going to be the one used by God down the road to take care of his brethren. And so God's working it out, and they're hating him. And, and Joseph, uh, probably Joseph may have been a little naive. You know, after you come home and give one bad report about your brethren, and then, uh, and then you have the first dream, and they're obviously not excited about it. I think on that second dream, we may have just passed. <laughs> Did, they really have, did he really have to tell him that second dream? But he does. And so maybe he's not, maybe he's not getting the drift that his brothers and sisters, or brethren and his, his mom and dad, are you know, wondering about this. And, and so it is in our lives. When God blesses us, when God takes us and uses us, we just, we just leave it in God's hands. We just allow God to work. We allow God to work out the circumstances. And it's interesting to me because I think long time ago, all of us, if we could look back 20 years prior, those of us that are older, we could see God's hand working and God preparing us. Years ago, I taught a third grade class in a school and I hadn't had any training in the school. I had 32 third graders and um, I taught the third grade. And it wasn't easy. I wasn't trained to be a teacher. Now I had a great staff around me. I asked them questions, and they helped me, and we made it through that year. And I think we did pretty. We did okay. You know, we uh, it wasn't the greatest, I'm sure, but uh, the parents were okay with it. Students were okay. Administration was okay, and I and I made it. Well, then the next year, the pastor says, "Rich, I want you to teach the sixth grade." Oh, boy, that was a different story. That's sixth grade. I mean, uh, the third grade, you know, we could get by. When you get into sixth grade, um, it was difficult. It was hard. The kids were harder. And uh, they were harder to control. And so uh, I remember Kevin Mosley, Dell Baker, Michael Hill. Um, every day those boys gave me trouble. Every day. I remember Esther Burgett. I, she, we... She's on Facebook now. I, I, um, we're friends on Facebook. Great girl. Great young lady. And uh, I remember these students. And I remember teaching them. But it was difficult. It was a difficult time. I was heavily involved in the church ministry. Um, uh, bus, bus team director, uh, bus team uh, youth pastor. Worked on a bus route. Um, was, then I, halfway through that year, I took over the Sunday school, the visitation of the church, some staff people left, and I was just so busy. I didn't have time to do anything. And, uh, and yet, I learned so much about a school. I learned how hard it is and how much work it is to be a teacher in a school. When you talk about prepping, you talk about grading papers, uh, you talk about preparing your lesson plans, uh, posting grades. Now today with our teachers, um, they're, they're putting all their grades on the, on the internet for parents, and so you really don't have time to just put something off anymore. So I'm thankful for our staff. You see, I can, I can empathize in pastoring a church with a school, uh, with a school staff, because of those years. Years ago, I didn't know that teaching those, those two years in that school 
at Forest Hills uh, Christian Academy in Atlanta, Georgia, that it would prepare me for one day having a church, pastoring a church with a school, and having all the uh, uh, responsibilities uh, of pastoring and also just trying to administrate. I'm thankful for Mr. Skrzynski, thankful for Mr. Ru Mrs. Rule this year, and these people, but I'm thankful for all the staff. They work hard, they're diligent, and now they're, now they're at home working and preparing lessons for the internet. And uh, I'll guarantee you this, there's no doubt in my mind, once we get through this time, that all the teachers are going to be thankful to be back in the classroom. All the students are going to be glad to be back in the classroom, whether it's this, this year or next year. And I'll guarantee you all the parents will be glad that they're back in the classroom. It's just a lot of work. And I'm thankful for the ministry of Calvary Christian School. But God was preparing me. God was preparing me years ago for, this, for such a time as this to be pastoring a church with a school. And uh, it's a different dynamic. And then God has been preparing you. God, God may be, again, preparing you for something for the future. That God have a plan that God has in your life. And so what we're going through now with this quarantine situation and being at home and having to manage things, and, you know, you may, get, you may lose your job. But you know what? If you lose your job, God has a better job. God is going to take care of you. We look to God. Now we've known, we've realized that we can't look to a company because the company just can't, can't, cannot uh, uh, exist without customers. And customers have to exist because they have money. And so if people don't have money, the company doesn't have customers, it's just a domino effect. But I'm telling you right now, God, you're, you're a child of the king. You're, you are God's uh, son and daughter through Jesus Christ. And he has a plan for your life. And he's going to take care of you during these days. And he's preparing you. He's preparing us. We've talked a lot about all these people moving into Banning. And believe me, they're still going to move in. They're still coming. And we're going through this difficult trial right now. But they are coming. And this church is going to grow. This, and this, this horrible time of difficulty in the world is going gonna, is gonna, to... Listen, people are turning to God. People are turning to Jesus. What we have to do is get prepared once this is over to disciple all the people that are going to come and all the people that can get saved. Listen, this, the work of this church is going to be far greater when this is over. And so I know you're quarantined, and I know you're a little bit frustrated. But first of all, let me tell you, I'm thankful I don't have the coronavirus. I'm thankful for that. We all ought to be thankful. And so I know you're at home, and I know it's difficult. But just to, you know, take the time, schedule, spend time with God, spend time in the Word, spend time with your family, get some things done around the house that you need to get done. Because get ready, because once this is over, I don't, I don't know when it's going to end. Whether it's May or June or July, or we go into August, but I'm telling you, we're going to be busier than ever here at, at Mountain Avenue Baptist Church in Calvary Christian School. And people are going to want, listen, we, we have a summer day camp here. We've, that's grown every year. Mrs. Moyer heads that up. But I believe if, if, if kids can go back and get out in June, it, it may be double the size. Parents are going to be ready for their kids to go somewhere. And they may enroll them in the, we have, we're going to have some summer school classes. This place is going to be busier than ever. And so God is preparing the way for us. Just as um, God was preparing the way for Joseph. And even though they didn't like it, Joseph was going to be the one that God was going to use and that God was going to take care, take care of. And, and Joseph was the one chosen. And he's the one, as we'll see here over the next few Wednesday nights, that trusted God. 
He never lost his faith, even though his, his, his brethren turned against him. He, he kept his faith. And so, uh, we're going to learn a great deal. But let's look at verse 12. And his brethren went to feed their flock, uh, their, flock their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and, and, uh, and I will send thee unto them. And he said unto him, Here, uh, I, uh, here I am. Listen, Joseph is just ready to go. Joseph doesn't hesitate. Dad, you want me to do something? I'm ready to do it. I'm ready to go. And uh, that's really the attitude of the people that God uses. Because, it, hey, I need you to do this, son. Okay, here I am. I'm ready to go. Here am I, Dad. Send me. And he was ready to go. He's, he's, and you study his life, he's, already, he's already, always ready. You see, he's obeying his father here, but he obeys God throughout this story, throughout his life. He looks to God. He's obedient to God. And that's the way we need to be. We just need to be ready. We need to be ready to... Um, to do what God asks us to do. And God at this time is, uh, and, and, uh, is asking us to go through this, we're going through this trial. None of us understand it. None of us, uh, uh, we just weren't prepared for it. Little did we know back in January when our theme was God first and uh, uh, 2020 vision. Little did we know that 2020 vision was gonna become a nightmare. Little did we know that uh, 2020 was going to be one of the worst years in the history of the world. We didn't know that, but God knew it. And this is we talk about the Word of God being a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. God guides us, God helps us, and God blesses us. So he's sending, he's sending Joseph on a mission here. His father is, and he says, okay, I'm ready to go. I'm going to send them. And go check on them. And Israel said unto Joseph, uh, again in verse 13, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem. Verse 14, And he said unto him, Go, I pray thee, and see whether it, is, it, it be well with thy brethren, and, and well with the flocks, and bring me word again. And so he sent him out of the vale of Hebron, and he came to Shechem. Little... Little did Jacob know that it would be 20 years before he saw his son again. He didn't know. He's sending him on a mission. Little did Joseph know what was going to happen. He didn't know it. And, uh, but God knew it, and God was guiding. And so, again, God knows the future. God knows his, his plan for all of us. God knows his plan for the Mountain Avenue Baptist Church and Calvary Christian School and everybody that's serving here right now. He's in control. This was a goodbye here for a long time. This was a goodbye, a goodbye here that, that uh, Jacob's saying goodbye to his son and his heart's going to be broken in just a few hours as Joseph will be sold into slavery by his brethren. And so Joseph gives the call, he gives his direction, and uh, he sends them to, to Shechem, where the boys were supposed to be. And, uh, and so there, he's on a mission from, from God. Immediately he accepts the father's uh, call, and he, he follows him uh, and looks and looks to God, and wants to be obedient to Him. And so it is in our lives. God wants us to, to demonstrate our love for Him by simply being obedient. In John chapter 4 and verse 15, it speaks of obedience. 
The woman said unto him, Sir, give me, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. And then she was obedient, obedient to God. We think about 1 John chapter 5, verses 2 and 3, just being obedient. By this we know that we love God, that we love the children of God, when we love God and keep His commandments. We do what He says. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not grievous. And so we're to be obedient. We're to follow God. We're to live for God. Do you know in your obedience, in following God, God has, as you follow Him, as you, as you are obedient to Him, He gives you uh, more to do for Him. Sunday school teacher, God will give you more when you reach the ones that you have. Junior church worker, God will give you more when you're ministering and meeting the needs of the ones you have. And so the great challenge for us at the Mountain Avenue Baptist Church, if God gives us more, will we minister to them? Will we take the time to pray for them, to help them? It just it takes a lot of time. See, what you have right now is a lot of time. But again, I'm telling you, there's going to come a day in the next few months, this church is going to be busier than ever. There are going to be people come in, and they're going to get saved, and they're going to need somebody to disciple them. Discipleship basically is friendship. It's being a friend to somebody. And then they come, and then you get them into Sunday school class, and they, they learn the lessons from the Sunday school teacher. They come to church. They begin to grow through learning the Bible. But it's a whole lot easier to come into a church and stick in a church when you have a friend, when you have somebody there that you know, and that will help you. And so all of us, church, have to be ready for that. We have to be ready to be an encouragement and a help to people. We have to be willing to go. We have to be obedient. And so uh, Joseph arrives in Shechem in verse number 15, uh, and, and a certain man found him, and behold, he was wandering in the field. Uh, and the man asked of him, saying, What seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren. Tell me, I pray thee, where, where they feed their, their flocks. And the man said, they, are, they have departed hence. And I heard them say, Let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said, and they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Before he, before he was even near to them, they were conspiring against him. And let me tell you something. As we do this work, as the church moves forward, this church and churches like this all across this country, there are going to be those that aren't going to like it. There are going to be those that were enemies of the gospel before, and they'll still be enemies. But you know, we're going to move forward. We're going to march forward. We're going to keep going. And they're going to look at you, some of your people and some of your, maybe you have family or friends or people at work. They're going to say, man, you're dreaming. You think the church is going to be greater? You think the church is going to be more effective? And they said one to another, behold, this dreamer cometh. There will always be people that will throw water on your dream. They'll say it can't be done. It can't be done. But I'm telling you, church, it can be done. They didn't like it because God, listen, jo God gave Joseph those dreams. God was at work. All Joseph's doing is, follow, is, is, is getting the dream from God and doing his thing. He's a shepherd. He's on an assignment to go out and check on his brethren. That's all he's doing. And yet they're being critical. Oh, behold, 
the dreamer cometh. And he's, he's the guy, you know, he's the guy we're going to be obedient to one day. So let me tell you, and listen close, closely, you know, things are difficult now. We're, we're, we're living in a time where the world is shutting down. It's shutting down. But I got to tell you, God has a great plan. God has a great plan. The church is empty, but it's not going to be empty forever. And this thing's moving forward. And listen, there are things in God. God has a plan and God has a purpose for all of us who are followers of Him. And I believe this, when this is, when, when, when God sees us through this, and yes, there's going to be deaths and there's going to be more casualties. By the way, I just believe we're at war. It's just like an unseen enemy. We've never had a battle on American soil other than the 9-11 attack in, in, in uh, Hawaii years ago when it was attacked. But now there's an unseen enemy and it's coming in and it's lurking about. It's the death angel. It's the coronavirus. But let me tell you something. God has overcome and God has given us uh, eternal life. The death angel is defeated. Death is already defeated. There's no enemy greater than death, and it's been defeated through Jesus Christ. So when we die, we're going to heaven. And so as we move forward, listen, we don't, we, we don't have to worry. We don't have to fret. We're ready to go. But, it's our, but listen, God's given us the call. We're here in this time frame. Living in 2020, you are who you are. You're married to who you're married to. Or if you're single, God has you in a place and God has a great purpose for you. And it's going to be exciting. And again, it's going to, listen, it's, it, we're in a war right now from an unseen enemy. And it's going to take the lives. And so we want to be careful. We're going to wash our hands. We're going to stay quarantined. But when we, come out of, when we come out of this, we still have an unseen enemy. It's called the devil. And he's going to try to defeat us. He's going to try to discourage us. So let's get strong. Be in the Word of God. Follow God. Be obedient to your Heavenly Father. Children, be obedient to your parents. Young people, teenagers, be obedient. Listen to me. God, one of the keys to you teenagers... For, to be used by God is learn to be obedient to your parents. Obey those that have rule over you, for they watch for your soul. You know the kids that go on and do something great in sports, the kids that are coachable. If they don't have the athletic ability to become a professional athlete or go to a Division I school, they're coachable, they're teachable, they become a coach and teach. And so be coachable. Be teachable. Let God, you're at home, you teenagers, you're at home. Be in the Word of God. Listen to the chapels every day. Brother Mike's preparing a chapel message for you. The brother uh, uh, Nino's uh, preparing a, a chapel message for the children. Parents, I'd make sure those kids see that. We've got to get prepared for after the virus. Because there's going to be a spiritual warfare going on over the soul of America. Because right now the soul of America is just at halt. It's halted. You can't, people that they're put their whole soul and effort into sports, it's, there's no games. There's no playoffs. There's no NCAA brackets. There's nothing to do. And so they've, they've filled that void all the time with different things. But we've got to be ready and not be discouraged and move forward with, with, great, with great courage in the days to come. And I'm excited about it. I like, I'm from Hazel Park, Michigan. Now, I always kid, I say, I run from a fight. I'm a, I'm a runner. I, I like to, you know, I don't like to fight. I didn't like to fight. Let me tell you something. 
If you're going to live for God and do what's right, you're going to have to fight. If you're going to have parents, and if you're going to be parents, and you're going to raise children for the glory of God, you're going to have to fight for those children. You're going to have to make sure they have the right friends. You're going to have to make sure that they go to the right school, get the right education. And you're going to have to do it from a heart full of love. And you're going to have to enjoy your life. Let me tell you, take this time, parents. Teach your children to love God and have a good time with them. Enjoy this time together. May they look back on this time, your children, and say, man, those, that was the best four or five months of my life. I had my dad's attention. I had my mom's attention. Spend time with them and then lead them to God. Lead them to Jesus. This may be a good time to start some personal, some not only personal devotions, but some family devotions. You could gather around one of these chapels uh, or church and, and talk to the kids after it's over and spend time with them and get them ready for the fight. Put on the whole armor of God. We have an unseen enemy right now, but the real enemy is the devil and the world, the flesh and the devil. And we're going to get back to fighting that in just a, just a few months here, two or three months. And so get ready, read your Bible, pray, study, look to God. Young people, again, be obedient. Parents, be obedient. Take the Word of God and meditate on it day and night and, uh, and teach it to your children. Well, let me tell you something. Joseph's on a mission. He's going out to check on his brethren. The first thing they do is, oh, behold, here, here comes the, the dreamer. He's there to check on and make sure they're okay. He's on an assignment from a dad who loves them and wants to make sure they're okay. So yeah, you know, uh, Jacob loved Joseph, but he didn't love him too much not to send him out to, into danger. You understand? He's out there and check him that, in that area there. It's a dangerous area. He sends him by himself. He's just a young boy. And so he sends them out there to check on the brethren. They should be saying, man, what's our brother doing out here? These are, this, is dangerous, this is a dangerous area. You understand? So, you know, uh, we're all on a divine assignment. And, you know, there's, these are dangerous days with the uh, coronavirus. And we got to be careful. We got to stay quarantined. We got to give it. We, wanna, we want this to pass. And it's going to pass. But... The work of, of Satan, the devil, and the demons, and all that that keeps, in the world of flesh and the devil, that keeps people from coming to Jesus Christ, that's going to be back on the main focus again. And everything that takes up our time in this, I love California, but there's a lot of stuff to do. And there's, there's you know, sports leagues and, and uh, activities, entertainment. This is the entertainment capital of the world. And so let's just make sure that church will be a priority when we come back. And uh, Jesus will be your focus. And the Word of God, it's guiding us through this. There's no doubt in my mind this book is helping you and sustaining you through this very difficult time. Well, the, brother, the brothers hate him so much they want to kill him. They debate back and forth. They finally uh, decide to, uh, to sell him as a slave into Egypt. And now off he goes. Then they, they're wondering, what are they going to tell their dad? So they said, hey, let's, we got his coat of many colors. Let's take an animal. They killed a goat, put his blood on it, went home, and told, uh, and told their dad that he's dead. He's dead. Joseph is dead. Dad, you sent Joseph out to, to check on us, and he died. He died. He, he's, he's heartbroken. Jacob's heartbroken. His heart is broken. His boy is gone. He, and this is what he says. I will never get over it. I am going to grieve until I join Joseph. But let me tell you something. Jacob was grieving 
but his brothers had to deal with the guilt. They lied to their dad. They broke their dad's heart. And not one of them can say, hey, dad, he's not really dead. We just sold him as a slave. He's going to be all right, dad. We'll go find him. Not one of them. Not one of them. And so Jacob's heartbroken. Joseph sold off into slavery. And his brethren don't care about him. And they don't care about the dad. And let me tell you something. God, God wants us to care about one another. In Philippians, Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. Now listen to me. Right now, the Bible says, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but, it, but in lowliness of mind let us esteem the other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man on the things of others. See, the brethren, they didn't care about their dad. They didn't care about their brother, Joseph. They just, sold, they just sold him and lied to their dad. They didn't care. And so we, by God's grace, want to be like Joseph, be obedient to our father, be obedient to the task, and always trust God. We're going to find that that throughout this story, that Joseph had a greater love for God. He had a greater love for God than he had vengeance against his brothers. He just looked to God, and he was misused, he was lied about, and all until he got to the place where God wanted him to, where God had planned for him to be the one that would have the wisdom to lay up all for seven years the plenty and be able to feed his family and take care of his countrymen. And yet, all the way through that process, he's looking to God. And so today, you and I are to look to the Lord and we're to esteem every man before us. And so here we are now at this point. Today, we live for others. Somebody else needs something, let's get it. You know, uh, we've seen it on television. We've seen people fighting over different things, whether it's toilet paper or some hand towels or whatever it may be. As believers, we just say, you know, you can have that. You can have that. In the house, you're all together in the house. Be kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. And so we got to learn to dwell together, but let's, let's dwell together in unity. Let's walk with God. Let's get prepared because i got to tell you, God has great things in store for this church, and you get to see it. You get to see us go through. This is a terrible thing we're involved. This is, this is really an unbelievable time to think about the whole world in lockdown. The whole world. The economy is coming to, the, to a halt. But i got to tell you, the greater thing is when God sees us through this, the great work that He has in store for all of us, for His, and He'll get the glory for it. And so look to Him, follow Him. Thank you for your faithfulness in watching the, the live stream tonight. Be praying for me and for Brother Theo and uh, Mrs. Rule in the school, the pastoral staff, the staff. Be praying. We need wisdom. We want to help people. We want to minister to people. And we want to get prepared for what's coming. And that's the blessings of God and people in great need. And we'll look forward to seeing what God has. So He's taking care of you today. And He'll take care of you tomorrow and the days to come. So rest easy tonight. God bless you. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you so much for this time that we can... God, use the technology to come into the homes of our, of our church family and others that may be watching. And Father, I pray if there's one that knows not Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, I pray they would open their heart to Jesus and know that He loves them. He cares about them. And if they'll look to Him, He will give them a home in heaven. And God, thank You for Your Word. Thank You for the example of Joseph that we'll see. 
as he goes through the trials and the difficulties and faces all the opposition that all of us face and will face as we move forward doing something great for you. God, help us to learn from him and from your precious word. Holy Spirit of God, bring comfort, strength, and grace now to all of us. Thank you for your blessings now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.